When Ignatius first spoke these words to his best friend and roommate, Francis Xavier, neither of them could have imagined the adventures, trials, and joys of what was to become the first Jesuit mission to Asia. During the 10 years he spent in Asia, St. Francis Xavier opened the doors to all of South, Southeast, and Northeast Asia, now the home of more than one half of today's population of 7 billion. Among his great achievements, St. Francis paved the way for the entry of the first Jesuit cartographers, astronomers, and mathematicians into China. The geographic and spiritual frontiers of his mission were the backdrop for the Jesuit presence in the Philippines and eventually for the founding of the Manila Observatory 150 years ago. Father Agustin Odias of the Society of Jesus, the chronicler of the Jesuit scientific tradition, noted that 34 craters on the moon were named after Jesuit priests. This did not happen by accident. The Jesuits were known in Europe for their work in education and science, since the first Jesuit colleges emerged there between the 16th to the 18th centuries. Father Odias points out that from their inception in 1544, they incorporated mathematics and astronomy into the core curriculum. Inevitably, questions were raised as to whether a conflict existed between faith and science, and the Jesuits led the effort in this discernment to establish that there was none. The teaching of mathematics included astronomy, optics, mechanics, and experimental physics, and evolved to become the foundations for the establishing of the first observatories in Europe. 33 observatories were founded in Jesuit colleges in Europe between 1540 and 1773. As the ministries spread all over the world, so did their scientific tradition. Between the 1800s to the turn of this century, a network of 75 new observatories was established. By this time, Jesuits had mapped and chronicled the stars and the planets, the flora and fauna, and the volcanoes, mountains, and seas spanning China, India, and Africa. But it was with the observatories in Belen, in Cuba, Zikaway in China, and in Manila that the study of the Taifun, or big wind, over the Pacific Ocean took hold. Navigation was the lifeblood of both trade and evangelization. Manila was of particular interest as a trading port and as a haven from the storms that threatened global trade and commerce. Situated between tectonic plates and large bodies of water, the Philippines had developed a reputation for perils associated with the movements of the earth and the variable weather. It was these earthly concerns that interrupted the first Jesuit missions to the Philippines that were originally headed to the new frontier, Mindanao. The first observatory in Manila was in fact established as an indirect result of the request by the Spanish colonial government to the Jesuits to assist in the development of the municipal school in Manila where Francisco Colina began his first meteorological observations in the tropics. While our Discoveries and Transitions exhibits feature the achievements of Spanish and American Jesuit scientists in the areas of astronomy, solar physics, meteorology, and seismology, the history of the Manila Observatory and its contributions to Earth System Science continues today as a mission for Jesuit and lay companions and their partners. In many ways, global forces such as world wars and the birth of new nations and changes in the Society of Jesus influence the Manila Observatory's mission and vision today. The impacts of environmental changes and slow and rapid disasters on poverty and development began influencing the focus of scientific research in the observatory in the 1990s. The study of disturbances in the upper atmosphere, climate, weather, air quality, and focal mechanisms of earthquakes slowly crystallized into core research programs. Mapping, a holdover from the Jesuit tradition in cartography, is now being pursued through the use of remote sensing, through satellites and other ground-based instruments, as well as computerized geographic information systems. Aside from the institutionalization of research programs, one significant change that has taken place is in their leadership. 
The shortage of Jesuit scientists eventually meant that lay scientists would be needed to support and possibly take over their missions. At the Manila Observatory today, all but one of the six programs are led by lay Filipino scientists. The challenge of carrying on the Jesuit tradition of spirituality and science is now in the hands of men and women who are committed to a life of service to others through excellence in their respective fields. The complexities that have put those that have least in our society at greater risk are multifaceted. To have a more holistic and grounded understanding and way of proceeding, the Manila Observatory is building from the past and venturing into frontiers of its mission with new and evolving relationships with international and local partners in government, academe, industry, the private sector, and the church. Then and now, the Manila Observatory, through its current scientific research, hopes to be in the frontiers of love and service. My first impression, before I was even working with the observatory, was uh, awe and interest in what the Jesuits were doing, especially since they were not just scientists, but also priests. It was both an intellectual and spiritual influence by the Jesuits for me. I value that it was always not only to build a career or reputation, but also to continue their essentially quiet but disciplined work. The work of MO remains to be that of doing science with a purpose, of science with a heart. Realizing the importance of transdisciplinarity, the core scientific areas of the Manila Observatory are strategically positioned today to address the challenges of sustainable development and poverty reduction. The Regional Climate Systems Program aims to understand past and future changes in climate, particularly in the Philippines, and to analyze the relationship and impacts of these climate changes to various sectors such as food, water, energy, and public health. Using climate modeling and analytical tools, the program aims to provide scientific guidance to disaster risk assessment and management, adaptation policy and development, and sustainability studies. The projects of the Manila Observatory are more current, and for the Regional Climate Systems Program, the necessity of the research that we do is now much more apparent given the damage caused by disasters like Tropical Storm Ondoy in 2009 and Typhoon Ruby in 2014. The devastation these typhoons have caused only illustrates further the importance of projects like Coastal Cities at Risk, which studies how much risks are present in coastal megacities. The Geomatics for Environment and Development program applies remote sensing and geographic information systems to map physical, social, and environmental information needed to guide sustainable development agenda of local communities in the country. Through the work we do in the observatory, we hope to show that maps are also development decision support, governance, and communication tools. Maps of poverty incidence, population density, and other specific geographical interests are juxtaposed against the data coming from RCS on various projections, such as rainfall and temperature change. In light of climate change, it has always been our question, what will happen to the Philippines? We transitioned into climate science that's focused on the impacts of climate change on our people and country in the near future and at the end of the century. As an emerging economy, the Philippines is also seeing the deterioration of air quality in its cities due to rapid urbanization, land use and land cover change, and increasing population density. The Philippines is still data poor when it comes to the field of air quality, so the area is open for any type of measurement we can get. So much is unknown. Atmospheric science is already well developed in other places, but it's still a challenge to understand this in the Philippines. Working with NASA from 1998 to 2004 was thus a great experience for me, given the state-of-the-art measurements of pollutants that they have. I was thinking then, when would the Philippines be part of something as big as these projects I was doing with NASA? Quality measurements are really needed to understand the state of air quality in the country. 
We just recently concluded an outdoor air pollution study called the Manila Aerosol Characterization Experiment. We measured black carbon, a dangerous and ubiquitous major component of our air here in Metro Manila. Father Sergio Sue SJ of the Solid Earth Dynamics Program maintains the longest running research project on the focal mechanisms of earthquakes in the Philippines. SED uses its seismic station to monitor, analyze, and contribute its earthquake data to international institutions in order to help advance research in seismology. The program is also developing its own computational methods to understand focal mechanisms, particularly in Mindoro Island. The Upper Atmosphere Dynamics Program has been continuing the observatory's ionospheric research that was started in the 1950s. It studies the electromagnetic interaction between the Earth and the Sun using Doppler radar, magnetometers, GPS satellites, and SINDA systems. We're still studying the Sun since solar activities affect the magnetic and the spheric activities of the Earth. Now we are studying the strength of electric jet currents in the atmosphere using current and historical data with the goal of predicting earthquakes. The Philippines is an ideal location for this study because it is in the Pacific Ring of Fire where it experiences frequent earthquakes. While its commission and the fields of research have evolved throughout history, the present-day observatory remains deeply involved in the same mission that inspired the Jesuits during the Spanish and American administration. I joined MO because I sought the apostolate and was convinced that it was the most appropriate institution for the work and service that I wanted to pursue. We should also keep the value we have for people. It shouldn't just be research or publication. And as long as we develop people with scientific rigor and a compassionate heart, that will be the greatest achievement, I think. It is really inspiring to be part of a long line of Jesuit scientific tradition. I want to give back to that by continuing the research that is relevant. Relationships are very important. It's a story of relationships of people. And I want to highlight the importance of collaborations. A lot of my work was done in collaboration and through networking with others. With a directive guided by Ignatian values and principles, to care for our common and only home, especially in time to heed the recent call of Pope Francis in the encyclical Laudato Si, the Manila Observatory continues to reach out to those in the peripheries of society with its enduring scientific tradition directed towards the progress of the Earth and its community. Music